Wendy from Poppy Hill Designs. Over the years we've shown you many creative uses for Dazzling Reflections Kaleidoscope software, whether it's scrapbooking, paper crafting, or the digital arts. Today we're pleased to announce we'll be adding machine embroidery to that list. The following video tutorial will show you how to design your own unique kaleidoscope, print it onto fabric, and prepare it for machine embroidery. So let's begin the design process. I have Dazzling Reflections open and I also have a photograph of a pink hydrangea that I had taken a couple of years ago. So we've got all the templates here off to the side. I'm going to choose KS61, double click on my photograph, click on the active segment, and just manipulate this photo around in the template until I get the desired kaleidoscope. And you can always resize the photograph and you can also rotate. So now that I've got this in place, this is the design that I like. So just to see it a little more clearly, I'm going to click on the Show Hide Template Lines, and that removes them. Now I can see exactly what this is going to look like when I print it. If you don't remove the lines, it's not a problem because the lines will not print. So the next step is to go to the printing screen. So I'll click on the icon, and now you can see all these icons become available. Then I'm going to click on my image because it's currently set for 8 inches and I need to resize this to 6 inches. So I'll go to the bottom right hand corner, click and hold, and just manually resize this using the ruler as a reference. Now I would like this to print on the center of my fabric, so to do that I need to move it around on this screen. So I'm going to click and hold and simply just move it down towards the bottom just right above this 8 inch marker on my ruler. And I'm also going to leave approximately the same distance on the left and the right hand sides. Now I know that this is not an exact measurement so to correct that I'm going to go to the print wizard and you can see this is what it's currently set for. I'm just going to highlight that with my mouse and type 6 on my keyboard. Then I'll click Print. And now I have a 6 inch kaleidoscope and this is how it will look when it prints on the 8.5 by 11 sheet of printable fabric. This way I can cut it out and leave whatever seam allowance I need or if you're using it in another project it gives you plenty of room. So the next step would be to print this onto the fabric. So I'm going to click on Print and you do need to do this on an inkjet printer. So I'll select my inkjet printer, go to properties. Now I don't have the HP brand t-shirt transfer paper. I'm using a different brand, but I have experimented with the settings with my printer and the fabric that I'll be using so I know what settings to use. So I would suggest that you consult your user's manual to see what they suggest or experiment just a little bit so you know what settings will give you the best results. So these are the typical settings they have over here to the side, but I'm going to go into this advanced paper and I'm going to select the iron-on transfer white fabric because I know that that works well with the brand that I'm using. And I'm going to adjust the print quality to best and then I'm going to click on OK and this will print the image onto the printable fabric for me. For this project, you'll need one sheet of printable fabric. Go ahead and remove the backing from the fabric and discard it. Then cut a piece of fusible interfacing. And with your iron, you'll fuse the printable fabric to the interfacing. Once you've done that, trim away any of the extra interfacing so that you're left with an 8.5 by 11 sheet of printable fabric. Run this through your inkjet printer, which I've already done, and I've included this in some patchwork. At this point, the project is suitably stabilized to run through your embroidery machine. Since a kaleidoscope is symmetrical, you can use the markings on the kaleidoscope to match up with the markings on your embroidery hoop.
So you can see the two reference points that I'm using there and then on the top and on the bottom. But for this particular project, I'd like it to have a bit more of a quilted look. So to achieve that, I've cut a piece of fleece. Now just a note, if it is fusible fleece, make sure that the fusible side is face down. I've cut the fleece about an inch and a half larger than the project, and that's just to give me a little bit of extra room. I'm folding the fleece in half, both top and bottom, and side to side, and I'll use those fold marks as a reference to line up my embroidery hoop. Make sure that the fleece is in the embroidery hoop securely, and it needs to be taut, not overly stretched, but just in there taut, as this will be the foundation for the first stitch out of the design, which is the alignment marks. So let me get that stitched out, and then I'll show you how to line up the patchwork. So here are all the reference marks stitched out onto the fleece, and I also trimmed away the jump stitches. For this next part, I found it useful to use a piece of packaging material to support the hoop, and also as I apply pressure in the center of the hoop, it won't stretch out the fleece. Now my embroidery machine starts all designs in the center of the hoop. So I've made a note of where that hole is on the fleece, and I'm going to stick a pin in the center of my kaleidoscope and line it up with that stitch mark. If your machine does not do this, you would just use one of the corner stitch marks to start your design alignment. Now I'm going to use the symmetry in the kaleidoscope design to line up the design with the stitch out marks. So I'm going to put my pin in the first corner here. Then I'll line it up with that first stitch mark. And take your time with this. You want to make sure that it's correctly aligned and the pin should be straight up. Once you have that in position, you can use that same reference mark on the kaleidoscope for all the other corners. Now this design is 6 inches, but I have selected a 5 inch embroidery file to stitch on top. I didn't want the stitch marks to go all the way to the edge, that's why I chose a 5 inch. You could choose a 6 inch, but I would suggest that you reduce the embroidery design by a couple of percent. So I'm almost done with this alignment, just get the last corner in place here. So now the patchwork is securely attached to the fleece and also the pink packaging material. The next step is to secure this loose fabric right here. The best way to do that is to use a temporary adhesive spray designed for fabric or machine embroidery. So I'll spray on a light coating and then using my fingers I'll just smooth that out so that's attached to the fleece. Once that's in place, I can remove the pins from the kaleidoscope. Now I can lift the hoop off of the packaging material. And then just for a little bit more security, I'm going to put a couple of pins in the top and the bottom. Now I know that my embroidery design is not going to stitch up in that area, so I don't have to worry about a needle strike. So at this point, we're ready to take this to the embroidery machine and stitch out the design.
So the machine is stitching out the last color of this design, so I'll let it finish up and then I'll show you what the finished project looks like.